Hello and welcome everyone. So we are back again with another informative video. Today we are going to discuss about how health insurance works in United States of America. Healthcare in the United States can be very expensive. A single doctor's office visit may cost several hundred dollars and an average three-day hospital stay can run tens of thousands of dollars depending on the type of care provided. Most of us could not afford to pay such large sums if we get sick, especially since we don't know when we might become ill or injured or how much care we might need. Health insurance offers a way to reduce such costs to more reasonable amount. The way it typically works is that the consumer pays an upfront premium to a health insurance company and that payment allows you to share risk with lots of other people who are making similar payments. Since most people are healthy most of the time, the premium dollars paid to the insurance company can be used to cover the expenses of the small number of enrollees who get sick or are injured. Insurance companies, as you can imagine, have studied risk extensively, and their goal is to collect enough premium to cover medical costs of the enrollees. There are many, many different types of health insurance plans in the US and many different rules and arrangements regarding care, Following are three important questions you should ask when making a decision about the health insurance that will work best for you. Where can I receive care? One way that health insurance plans control their costs is to influence access to providers. Providers include physicians, hospitals, laboratories, pharmacies, and other entities. Many insurance companies contract with a specified network of providers that has agreed to supply services to plan enrollees at more favorable pricing, if a provider is not in a plan's network. The insurance company may not pay for the service provided or may pay a smaller portion than it would for in-network care. This means the enrollee who goes outside of the network for care may be required to pay a much higher share of the cost. This is an important concept to understand, especially if you are not originally from the local Stanford area, if you have a plan through a parent, for example, and that plan's network is in your hometown, you may not be able to get the care you need in the Stanford area. Or you may incur much higher costs to get that care, what does the plan cover? One of the things healthcare reform has done in the US is to introduce more standardization to insurance plan benefits before such standardization the benefits offered varied drastically from plan to plan for example some plans covered prescriptions others did not now plans in the u.s are required to offer a number of essential health benefits which include emergency service hospitalization laboratory tests maternity and newborn care mental health and substance abuse treatment outpatient care doctors and other services you receive outside of a hospital pediatric services including dental and vision care prescription drugs preventive services eg some immunizations and management of chronic diseases rehabilitation services for our international population of students who might be considering coverage through a non-US based plan. Asking the question, what does the plan cover, is extremely important. How much will it cost? Understanding what insurance coverage costs is actually quite complicated. In our overview, we talked about paying a premium to enroll in a plan. This is an upfront cost that is transparent to you. Unfortunately, for most plans, this is not the only cost associated with the care you receive. There is also typically cost when you access care. Such cost is captured as deductibles, coinsurance, and or copays and represents the share you pay out of your own pocket when you receive care. As a general rule of thumb, the more you pay in premium upfront, the less you will pay when you access care. The less you pay in premium, the more you will pay when you access care. The question for our students is, pay now or pay later. Either way, you will pay the cost for care you receive. We have taken the approach that it is better to pay a larger share in the upfront premium to minimize, as much as possible, costs that are incurred at the time of service. The reason for our thinking is that we don't want any barrier to care, such as a high copay at the time of service, to discourage students from getting care. 
We want students to access medical care whenever it's needed. Important insurance terms and concepts out of pocket expenses. The terms out of pocket cost and or cost sharing refer to the portion of your medical expenses you are responsible for paying when you actually receive health care. The monthly premium you pay for care is separate from these costs, annual deductible. The annual deductible is amount you pay each plan year before the insurance company starts paying its share of the costs. If the deductible is $2000, then you would responsible for paying the first $2000 in healthcare you receive each year. After which the insurance company would start paying its share, copayment, the copay is a fixed upfront amount you pay each time you receive care when that care is subject to a copay. For example, a copay of $30 might be applicable for a doctor visit, after which the insurance company picks up the rest. Plans with higher premiums generally have lower copays and vice versa. Plans that do not have copays typically use other methods of cost sharing. Coinsurance, coinsurance is a percentage of the cost of your medical care. For an MRI that costs $1000, you might pay 20%. Your insurance company will pay the other 80%. Plans with higher premiums typically have less coinsurance, annual out of pocket maximum. The annual out of pocket maximum is the most cost sharing you will be responsible for in a year. It is the total of your deductible, copays and coinsurance. Once you hit this limit, the insurance company will pick up 100% of your covered costs for the remainder of the plan year. Most enrollees never reach the out of pocket limit, but it can happen if a lot of costly treatment for a serious accident or illness is needed. Plans with higher premiums generally have lower out of pocket limits, which is means to be a covered benefit. The terms covered benefit and covered are used regularly in the insurance industry but can be confusing. A covered benefit generally refers to a health service that is included under the premium for a given health insurance policy that is paid by or on behalf of the enrolled patient. Covered means that some portion of the allowable cost of a health service will be considered for payment by the insurance company. It does not mean that the service will be paid at 100%. For example, in a plan under which urgent care is covered, a copay might apply. The copay OS an out of pocket expense for the patient. If the copay is $100, the patient has to pay this amount and then the insurance plan covers the rest of the allowed cost for the urgent care service in some instances. An insurance company might not pay anything toward a covered benefit. For example, if a patient has not yet met an annual deductible of $1000 and the cost of the covered health service provided is $400, the patient will need to pay the $400. What makes this service covered is that the cost counts toward the annual deductible. So only $600 would remain to be paid by the patient for future services before the insurance company starts to pay its share. That's all for today. If you found our video informative, please help us grow this channel by subscribing our channel. Also hit the bell icon button for the new videos notification.